complete Christmas story. Origins of Christmas. The Christmas that the British people know has its origins in both Christianity and paganism. Paganism, pre-Christian religion with many gods. In the first century AD, British religion was a mix of pagan gods of the earth. And Roman gods of the sky. The winter solstice was fixed by the Romans in 45 BC as being on the 25th of December, according to the Julian calendar. The winter solstice, Midwinter's Day, marks the shortest day of the year. The ancient Britons had noticed that the sun seemed to be dying up to midwinter's day. Britons, the original inhabitants of the British Isles before the Anglo-Saxon invasions. After midwinter's day, the sun seemed to be reborn. This was a great reason to celebrate. With Midwinter's Day comes the promise of better weather and a return to the warmth of spring. The Britons celebrated the sun's rebirth with the festival of Yule. Yule was a time of feasting and drinking. Feasting, eating a huge elaborate meal. In Britain the word Yule still refers to Christmas. The Bible does not give the date for the birth of Jesus. Around 221 AD, Sextus Julius Africanus popularized the date of the 25th of December for Christ's birth. Sextus Julius Africanus was a Christian traveler and historian born in Jerusalem. The word Christmas was first recorded in English in 1123 AD. Christes Masse was the term in Old English. So we can say that the festival we call Christmas began in Britain around that date. Other names for Christmas are Xmas, Noel, Yule and Yuletide. Xmas was originally a handwriting abbreviation of the word for Christ in Greek. Noel comes from the French word for Christmas. British Christmas is a mix of traditions from Christianity, the Roman festival of Saturnalia, and the pagan festival of Yule. Christmas Symbols
Christmas is supposed to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. But it is not the image of the Nativity that most British people associate with the festival. One of the main symbols of Christmas is holly. Holly is an evergreen. Evergreen, a plant that keeps its green leaves throughout winter. Evergreens that produce berries in winter were thought to have magical powers. Evergreens were a very important part of pagan religion and are still used in Christmas celebrations. Mistletoe is a plant that is important at Christmas. Like holly, mistletoe bears fruit during the Christmas season. Today, mistletoe is hung up in many houses and offices. Any two people who meet under the mistletoe are obliged to kiss. This is a Scandinavian tradition. Around the middle of the 19th century, the tradition of the Christmas tree became popular in Britain. It is under the highly decorated Christmas tree that the presents are placed. Presents are another important symbol of Christmas. They are normally opened by the family on Christmas Day. The giving of presents comes from the festival of Yule the Roman Saturnalia and the Christian tradition. The seeds of our commercially obsessed Christmas were sown in 1822. Seeds of, an expression meaning the start of something, the thing that started something else. American Clement Clark Moore wrote the poem A Visit from St. Nicholas. It was this poem that helped popularize the exchanging of gifts. Popularize, make popular. Complaints of the commercial pressure of Christmas destroying its true meaning were heard as early as 1850. The symbol of Christmas that has been most used by business to encourage people to spend money is, of course, Santa Claus. Father Christmas The British Father Christmas has his origins in both a Christian figure and a pagan deity. Origin, beginning. Deity, a god. 
The Christian figure was Saint Nicholas of Myra. Saint Nicholas was a 4th century Greek bishop, famous for his generous gifts to the poor. Bishop, senior member of the Christian Church. Gift, present, something given to someone else for free. One story of St. Nicholas has him throwing a bag of gold coins into a house where they land in a stocking drying by the fire. The pagan deity was Odin. Odin was an important god of the Germanic people. Odin rode through the sky on an eight-legged horse called Sleipnir. Odin was described as having a long beard. Beard, hair growing from the chin and cheeks of a man, often including the hair under the nose. Children would fill their boots with straw and carrots or sugar and place them near the chimney of the house for Sleipnir. To thank them for feeding his horse, Odin would replace the food with presents or sweets. It's easy to see how Odin and Saint Nicholas became associated with Santa Claus. Associate, assumed to be one and the same. Children in Britain still hang a stocking up by the chimney on Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve, December the 24th, the day before Christmas Day. Stocking, another word for a sock, though normally a long sock. They also leave a mince pie or a carrot for Santa's reindeer, and a glass of sherry for Santa. Mince pie, a pastry case filled with rich fruits and sugar. In Britain, Father Christmas is also known as Santa, Saint, or Santa Claus, Saint Nicholas. The Father Christmas we know today arrived in Britain in the 17th century. His cloak was originally green, the evergreen colour of holly and mistletoe. Cloak, long heavy covering, secured at the shoulders, having no sleeves, but often with a hood for the head. The modern image we have of him began in a poem a Visit from St. Nicholas by Clement Clark Moore. T'was the night before Christmas, when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The poem also has Santa Claus riding in a sleigh, pulled by reindeer, and delivering presents down the chimney. Thomas Nast, an American cartoonist, first drew Santa as we know him today. The picture appeared on the cover of Harper's Magazine in 1863. Nast also invented the idea that Santa's home is near the North Pole and gave him red and white clothing. Children now write letters to Santa Claus every year and the Postal Service, the Royal Mail, even has a special address for Santa. A visit from Santa is the highlight of a child's Christmas.
Santa often visits the children's school. When I was young, my school was on a military base, and Santa arrived by helicopter. The Death and Resurrection of Christmas Strangely enough, Christmas was banned in England after the First English Civil War. The Puritans banned Christmas in 1647. Proper killjoys, they also executed the King of England, Charles I, in 1649. Killjoy Somebody determined to stop others' pleasures. When Christmas was banned, people protested and many riots took place. Canterbury was controlled by rioters for weeks. The rioters decorated their doorways with holly, a tradition still carried out today. Christmas was again allowed after the restoration of King Charles II in 1660. Despite this, clergymen still disapproved of celebrating Christmas. By the 1820s, people began to worry that Christmas was dying out altogether. Dying out, ending forever. British writers wanted to revive the Tudor Christmas. Tudor. The period marked from Henry VIII until Elizabeth I, 1485 to 1603. They saw this as the ideal Christmas. Ideal. Best example of. They began working to revive the holiday. Revive. Bring back to life. Charles Dickens did the most to revive the festival of Christmas when he wrote the novel A Christmas Carol in 1843. This novel helped to revive the spirit of Christmas. People began associating Christmas with the family, goodwill and compassion. Goodwill, being kind to others. Compassion, expression of concern for others. Through A Christmas Carol, Dickens influenced many of the ways that Christmas is celebrated today. The novel emphasised the family gathering, the seasonal food and drink, games and generosity of spirit. One phrase from the book, Merry Christmas, has become the traditional Christmas greeting. With the revival of interest in Christmas, many of the things we associate with Christmas today were created.
The first Christmas card was also produced commercially in 1843 by Sir Henry Cole. Christmas crackers were first made in 1847 by Thomas J. Smith of London. Cracker, a paper tube containing a joke, a paper hat, a small gift and a paper device that makes a loud bang when pulled apart. Christmas carols, sung since medieval times, grew more popular. Christmas carols, ancient and modern, had been published in 1833 by William B. Sandys. This book contained the now popular carols The First Noel, I Saw Three Ships, and Hark the Herald Angels Sing. It also contained God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen, which Dickens included in A Christmas Carol. This made that carol very popular. God rest you merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay, for Jesus Christ our Saviour was born upon this day, to save for souls from Satan's power, which had gone astray, oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. These Victorian writers and entrepreneurs had brought the spirit of Christmas back to life. Christmas food. Just like the festivals of Saturnalia and Yule from which it sprang, Christmas is a time of feasting. Feasting, eating a huge elaborate meal. Everyone eats and drinks much too much. The main meal, Christmas dinner, is eaten after midday on Christmas Day. The typical Christmas dinner in Britain consists of roast turkey with stuffing and a cranberry sauce, served with a variety of vegetables including roast potatoes, carrots and Brussels sprouts, small sausages wrapped in bacon and gravy. Gravy, a sauce made from the juices that drip from cooking meat. This is followed by Christmas pudding with brandy butter. For adults, the meal is accompanied by too much wine. Christmas cake is also normally available. This is a rich fruit cake covered in marzipan and icing. Rich, strong, intense flavors. Marzipan, a paste of almonds and eggs. Icing, a sugar coating on cakes. Throughout the Christmas holiday, it is traditional to drink a punch called wassail. Punch, an alcoholic drink made of a mix of drinks and fruit. The drink is an alcoholic drink to which spices such as cinnamon and nutmeg have been added. It is served hot. Wassail comes from the Middle English expression was heil, which means be healthy. 
yet the rich food consumed over a modern Christmas is hardly designed to keep people healthy. Quite the opposite, in fact. The excess of eating and drinking lasts until the New Year's celebrations. In the New Year, thousands of people join gyms to try to lose some of the weight gained.